Tube. I'm Annie and I am the Proper Stitcher and welcome to episode number 74. If this is your first time joining me, I am so glad you stopped by today. This is a channel where I like to talk about cross stitch and quilting and hopefully give you inspiration to fully finish your projects. And if you're returning, thank you so much for your continued support, all of your wonderful comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you all have had a great week. I've had a good week. We've had sort of a staycation here. Tristan has been on fall break and we did not go out of town this year for fall break and it's been nice to kind of just take it easy, be at home, enjoy the fall weather here in East Tennessee. Um, we did go to um, a college tour on Wednesday and I took a quick trip up to Johnson City to Cross Stitch and Crafts and visited with Sandra and Amy and all of their, their regulars that are in their store on a regular basis stitching. So it was so much fun to just get away and do that. I just needed a couple of things and I needed, it was something I needed to do in person. So that was so much fun to see them, even though it was just a quick trip. Yesterday, Tristan and I uh, spent the day together. We went shopping, we um, went up to the mountains, we had dinner together. So it was a, a good day. Yesterday was Thursday, today's Friday. I usually do record on a Thursday, but when your 16 year old son wants to spend the day with you, you take advantage of that every single time. <laughs> so we had a good day together. Uh, so today's Friday and they are, Matt and Tristan are going to the grocery store for me. They're getting haircuts and they're picking up Tristan's car. So I have some time alone at home, which does not happen very often. So let's jump into this video. I do want to clarify and go over a couple of things from last week. I realized that it was kind of a episode that was just all over the place. I showed you some finishes. I announced the 31 winners from the previous week's give, giveaways, and I feel like I rushed through some things. Um, I had, we had our friend James over, we were getting ready to watch the football game, and I ran out of time, and I knew they were waiting on me to finish. They, they were downstairs, um, had the football game on mute, and I knew they were down there, even though y'all couldn't hear them. I knew they were there and I felt like they were listening and just ready for me to get finished. You know how when, when you have somebody just waiting on you and I felt rushed. So what I thought I would do this video is kind of go over some of the steps of the two finishes I shared with you last week and I have another finish to share with you this week. So I thought we would take our time, go over some of those things, go over kind of the step by steps and not be rushed or pressured to hurry um, through it or so I don't feel rushed or pressure to hurry through it. So I do apologize for that. I probably left a lot of questions unanswered last week. So we're gonna go over all that again. And I have some haul to share with you, not a lot. And I have whips and the giveaways from last week and just a couple of upcoming events to share with you. So grab your pen and paper, grab your coffee or tea, and let's get started. So. What somebody asked me a couple of weeks ago if I only drink tea. Well, I drink tea usually in the afternoon, but I drink coffee in the morning. So I get all my caffeine in all forms. I get coffee comes in coffee, tea, and soda. So I probably drink too much caffeine. So grab all those things and let's get started. Okay, so I have a new finish to share with you this week. Many of you have been joining me and Stitchy Linda and finally a farm girl. We are stitching JBW Design Christmas ornaments. And if you're joining us or if you follow us on Instagram, we use the hashtag JBW Ornament Ornaments Ornament SAL. So if you're joining us, please use those hashtags. Tag me and I would love to see what you're working on. But this week I finished. French Country Santa. And this is such a cute design. So there is a correction in this pattern. Um, and Judy has talked about this on her floss tube. So you can go to her website to get the correction. The, I believe it's the accent marks on the, um, on some of the words on the Noel and on, on uh, Pierre, uh, they are in the wrong spot. So I followed the correction from her website. Um, and you also have the option when you, when you stitch this, she has both the, the French and the English version. So if you don't wanna stitch the, the French words, it, she also has a version with Santa under it. 
but here's my finish. So I decided to make it into an ornament and I used the red velvet from lady.creates. So let me show you a close up. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I did is I stitched this one strand over two on 37 count Russian tea cake legacy linen. So, and I opted to use the French version. I found this cording at Hobby Lobby. I did not make my own cording this time. Next time I think I will because this one wanted to, was just giving me a hard time. But it, I loved the colors and I thought it looked really nice with the red. I actually asked Matthew. I showed him the cording, I showed him the chenille, and I showed him the pom-pom trim. He chose the cording. So this was so much fun to stitch and just like JBW's regular motifs or designs, she has all these motifs hidden. And so I'm gonna hold it back a little bit so you can see. So here's a here's a sleigh, here's a reindeer, holly berries, the tree, you've got a stocking and a bow. And I just love his Santa's beard, how swirly it is, his boots. So cute. I had so much fun stitching this. I stitched it in Ribbon Red Classic Color Works, um, one strand over two. And I used the, I think this is Chili. I'll link it below, but the Chili, the red velvet. This would be so cute stitched in green. And you can use the green velvet on the back. So I stitched it. And then I finished it on sticky board. So I cut the sticky board to fit. I did one layer of quilt batting. I did use interfacing. I ironed interfacing on my piece. And then I wrapped the top piece of the fabric. I wrapped it on the top sticky board. And then I cut another sticky board the same size for the back. And then I wrapped the velvet around the back. And then what I did, because I wanted a, them to be close together, I sewed the top and the bottom together. So I sewed these two pieces together. And Judy's the one who mentioned that. She, she said that if you sew them together, hand stitched it all the way around, you're going to bring that sandwich, those two pieces of sticky board closer together um, than if you just glued them together because when you glue them your sticky board or your mat board or your comic board whatever board you're using wants to have a gap and kind of swirl up a little bit so if you hand stitch them together you're going to close that gap and bring it in a lot tighter and have a smoother flatter finish so that's what i did and then i um i what i tried to hand sew this trim on this cording, but this is kind of a satiny cording, and that's what I meant. I probably won't use this again, but the satiny cording, satiny, I'm making up my own words. The satin cording um, wanted to fray. I hand stitched about halfway around, and it just was not laying the way I wanted it to. So I took it apart, and I decided to use the Eileen's glue and I glued it on. And so I glued, I took a, um, a toothpick and I dipped it in the glue and I ran a, a, a smooth line across a section. And then I laid the cording and I used a clip and clipped it on there. And then I did it the same. I went all the way around and did it piece by piece. And so I glued the cording on and let it sit overnight with those clips on. And then the next morning when I got up, I added the hanger. Now I did sew the hanger on, I hand sewed the hanger on. And I just love how it turned out. I love how simple it is. It was an easy finish. And one thing I wanted to talk to y'all about, and this is also why I'm bringing out my other finishes from last week with you all, that something occurred to me that all of these levels of finishing, so, all the levels of finishing, we're building on them each time we finish. You know, each time we add a new technique or we want to finish from a flat fold or a flat finish to a framed finish or learn how to do something round, 
we're building on these techniques that we're learning. So when I have showed y'all before about finishing on sticky board or finishing on something to, to glue onto a wooden board, we're taking that knowledge of finishing that, that way and we're applying it to this way now. So because we learned how to do our corners and how to, how to glue on the back, we just took two pieces and we glued them together. And so we're building on that. And now instead of finishing it on a, a board or, a, or an object you can buy in a store, you're now doing it from something you just have at home. So if you don't have sticky board, but you have comic board or mat board or something, you can finish it like this without having to buy something from the store to finish it. You just have some basic pieces and you can put some embellishments on this if you want. But if you want a simple finish, that that's perfect. You don't have to buy a piece of um, something to mount it on. You now have your, you've created your own mounting piece. So we took that, inf that knowledge and that technique and we've applied it to another way of finishing. So you'll see as we go over the other two pieces what, I, what I'm talking about. But this was so much fun. I used the Eileen's glue. I did not use hot glue at all on this. Um, I really, really cannot stress enough how smooth of a finish and how smooth your corners can be when you start using that Eileen's glue. And I know I'm probably not saying it right. Eileen's, Aileen's, it's A-L-L-E-E-N-E-S. Great wonderful glue. So here he is, French Country Santa from JBW Designs. I really had so much fun with him. Um, and I just love how he turned out. You could add bells to it if you want to, little jingle bells. You can add so much to it. But I just thought he, he just runs the show on this one. He did not need any other embellishments. So and let me show you the side one more time. So see how smooth and thin that is? It's almost like a little sandwich. So I am really, really happy with how he turned out. One tip though, on this velvet, I used clips, like I said, to attach the, um, after I glued the trim and I used some clips to kind of hold it in place. Well, when I took those clips off, it left a little mark on the back of the velvet. So what I did is I dipped my finger in water and I just rubbed it over the um, the marks that it left and, and rubbed my finger over it and it pulled those fibers back up again. Um, it's kind of a trick I learned on your carpet. If you like move furniture and it leaves a dent in the, the carpet, like say a dresser leg, it leaves a dent on the floor, put an ice cube on it and, and it'll pull those fibers back out when it starts to melt and you run your finger over it. So I kind of use that same idea to this and it worked, it came out. So it does not have any more um, of those little um, clip marks. I hope that makes sense. All right, so he's so cute. I hope y'all stitch this one. He is adorable, but don't forget, I'll link Judy's website below. She does have a correction for if you choose to stitch the French version. If not in the pattern, you she does have Santa if you just wanna type Santa, uh, stitch Santa. So cute, let me see it on this one. She also shows another way you could finish it. So she stitched it and then finished it on a little sachet bag or you could put it on a paddle. A wooden, wooden paddle from Stitch Etc would be great. But I wanted to attempt an ornament like this. So he was so much fun. My next JBW um, ornament that I am going to stitch is Christmas in Williamsburg. That will be my next one. So I'm going to pull all the floss for this one and this will be my next ornament that I stitch of Judy's. So, okay, so let's go over my finishes from last week. I forgot to pull the patterns. I'm not gonna go get them. I've, I've shown this to y'all so many times, but my two finishes I shared with you last week are both Blackbird Design finishes. The first one is this one from, it's called Lily of the Valley. And it is um, from the book, it's something blossom and, and, and all that blossoms is love or something. I'll link it, I'll, I'll list it below. And, or you can go back to my last video. You just go back to my last video and you can see it. I show the booklet that it's from, but what I didn't go over with you all, and going back to 
what we were talking about with this. So all I did on this, this frame I got off of Etsy from a company called Bressler. I will link this below. B-R-E-S-L-E-R frames, Bressler frames. And they custom make frames for you. You choose the dimension um, and they will custom make it for you. I This is in dark gray, the color that I chose. So uh, what I wanted to talk about was a little bit more detail. This came with foam core inside the frame. It came with the glass and the backing is, I. it has these wonderful backing pieces. Hang on one second. Well, it, I can't take it off. It has these little pieces in the back of the frame that fold down over it. So, but I covered it with this scrapbook paper. So what I did with this is I did cut a piece of quilt batting to go in between the stitched piece and the foam core. And the reason I did that is because this uh, is tennis, uh, Russian tea cake linen from Legacy Linen. And it was a little bit thinner than um, I wanted, and I didn't want it to be so thin that you could see the foam core behind it. So I wanted to give it just a little bit, I wanted to darken the back of it a little bit. So I put the quilt batting behind it. I did not iron any interfacing on because as I've learned before, interfacing when you have a border, it will, if you don't get it on just right, it's gonna make that border wavy and uneven. So I put the quilt batting on, then I put the stitched piece on and I laid it down on flat. So I had my stitched piece down, then I put the, the, the batting and the foam core and I wanted to make sure it was measured or centered evenly all the way around. And when you have an, an odd shape, this one measures just under four inches. So it's like three and three quarters by four. So when you have something that's not an equal square all the way around, but it's going in a square frame, add the extra at the bottom. So that's where you would put your extra material at the bottom. You, so you would have a little bit more of a spacing at the bottom than at the top. So I used the top as my guide and got it where I wanted at the top. And then if you go to Celeste Creates, YouTube channel, Floss Tube channel. I'll link her below. She just showed how to do lacing. If you want to learn to lace the back of a cross stitched framed piece, because this one was smaller, I did not lace it. I felt comfortable enough using double sided tape. And so, just like when you do your corners and you finish a flat piece like this, that's the same technique I used when finishing this. So I started with my corners. I folded them over and taped them. And, and I used acid-free um, framing double-sided tape. It's just a scotch tape. It, and you can get it in the framing section at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, all of those places. So I did the corners first, made sure that the corners were the way I wanted it. And then I, I kept turning it over to make sure that it was still centered. And then I did two sides. You, you, whether it's top and bottom or left and right, just do two sides, opposite sides, and then do the next two sides. So do two sides and two sides. And it does not have to be perfect because you're hiding those corners inside the frame. So once all of that was done, then I popped it in the frame and I flipped it over to make sure it looked the way I wanted it to look. And then I put the backing on, folded down those pieces that hold the frame in place, and then I just taped the back of the back with the scrapbook booking paper that I had cut to fit. And that was it. So once you, again, we're using these techniques from this finish and we're kind of applying them here, but instead of glue, I use double-sided tape. Or if you would rather, you can do the lacing technique Go over and watch Celeste. She just did a video on how to lace the back of a piece. So I have not done lacing. I have not attempted that yet. That will be something I will try on a bigger piece, but on this smaller one, I thought I would do the double-sided tape. 
and it worked great for me. Super easy. Um, I am stitching this piece again, and I'm going to use the same frame again. But this frame comes in pink. It comes in gold, I believe, in this gray. Lots of other options on the, on the Etsy shop. So go and check that out. Hopefully that goes over a little bit more detailed for you. I did not mean to rush through that last week. So now for the drum finish that I did last week. Um, so I've shown you all how to finish or how I have finished some of the round pieces. So I've done summer in the round, I did Christmas in the round, um, and I mounted them on a wooden round paddle from Stitch Etc. So I took that information or that technique and I've built on that when you finish a drum. So this is what I mean by we take, once you learn or kind of practice on one finishing technique, you can then add to it. So when we're thinking of learning to do something new, like for me, finishing a drum, I, it's not like I'm starting completely from scratch or from the, the beginning, beginning, because I've built on that knowledge of finishing a round piece and I've applied it to now finishing a drum. So I, I was fairly comfortable with finishing a circle piece. So all I had to do this time was take that and now add to it and finish it as a drum. And so this is how we're building these skill levels to then attempt and try new techniques and new finishes on our next projects. So as I mentioned, I followed Vonna Pfeiffer with the Twisted Stitcher. I followed the directions that were in the Blackbird book. This comes from um, Autumn Sound. This is Autumn Sound, but it is in the Winds of Autumn book from Blackbird Designs. They have finishing instructions. So I took different finishing instructions from all these different um, platforms and I've applied it here. And it was a lot of fun to make. And I will definitely make another drum. I know what I'll do next time that will um, improve my finish. I want to finish a drum that has the stitching on the side. So many things that I want to do. But what I did in this one is I, it, in the book, it had two templates. And because I used the same stitch count as the book suggested or the directions suggested, I was able to use the template that they provided. So I finished, I cut out the template and I finished the circle pieces like I would if I had mounted it on a wooden board or another finish. And so I took that, once I had those two made, then I was learning a new technique. I was learning how to make the drum part and how to stuff it and how to go from there. And so once you have your top and your bottom finished on the boards the way you want it, then you would attach the fabric. So you would then sew, what you do is you take your strip of fabric and you sew the right sides together with a quarter inch seam. You turn it inside out. So then you, you've turned the, the fabric inside out and then now you're going to attach the circle. So you put the circle top into the, the strip and you're hand sewing it around. And so then what you have, what looks like a shower cap and you turn it upside down and you stuff it with your, either your crushed walnut share, shells or your polyfill. And I did both in this case because that's what Vonna Pfeiffer did in the, um, her video. So I stuffed it with polyfill and with crushed walnut shells. I got it as full as I could. And then once you get it where you want it to be, then you attach the bottom and you hand sew it, stitch it all the way around. And so that's pretty much all you do. You could stop right there. And what, but what I did is I added the rickrack and I hand sewed that across the top and I did it on the bottom. So I did make some mistakes and I am okay with those. I know what to do next time and how to correct them, but this was so much fun to, to make. And it all starts with, I started, I learned how to do a circle finish several, several months ago, and I built on it from that. So you don't have to do that. You don't have to start with just learning to build or to, to finish a circle fin uh, project, but 
it made this process a little bit easier for me because I had attempted a circle finish before. So that's what I mean by all of these designs and all these um, finishing techniques that we learn along the way, we can apply that knowledge to the next technique. So hopefully that clarifies a few things. I tried to go a little bit slower this time, but the next drum finish that I do, I will try to do a video, but Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, she has a wonderful tutorial. So go and check her out. I will link her below. I will link Celeste Creates below so that you can watch her lacing technique. Um, but so many, so many different ways of finishing and, and different, um, different people have a different style and a different way of finishing and a different way of explaining it. So, and as I have said before, I am not a professional finisher. I never claim to be a professional finisher, but I am not afraid to try. And so hopefully that helps you all kind of break it down. I like to break and chunk things out and I like to apply and build on what I, what I have learned. And hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully that helps you all when you go and try to finish something. So chunk it out, do it in baby steps. So let's go on into my haul that I got this week. I did not get a lot. I really didn't. I've, I've been really good. I think you all need to congratulate me and I'm patting myself on the back. I have not been getting a lot of stuff lately. But I did get this at Cross Stitch and Crafts. I picked up Honeysuckle Manor, which is a Blackbird design booklet. And the reason I got this is because Celeste texted me the other day and said that she was starting a new pattern. And it was beautiful. What she did is she took this pattern. This is Hannah Lavina Jocelyn. She took this pattern, and I believe it was this one, and she is changing the colors. And, oh wait, no, she's doing this one. This book has too many pretty ones. This is Margaret Harris. And if you go and follow Celeste, you can see her color changes. But she is stitching this beautiful design, and she is changing the colors. And I absolutely love the patterns in this book. So many really, really pretty colors. But this is Honeysuckle Manor. And it is a Blackbird design book. And someone's mentioned to me before that they like it when I show y'all the, show you what's inside these books, obviously without showing you the patterns, but because so many of you, you're not, you don't get to go to a local needle work store, so you don't get to flip through some of these books. But in this book, you have a lot of different um, patterns. And what I love about Blackbird books is they have big pieces to stitch and smaller pieces to stitch. And I love that color of that house. That is Raspberry Frost is that color. So pretty. Is that right? Yes, Raspberry Frost. No, Red Pear. <laughs> that is Red Pear, which is a beautiful color. Then you have this pattern in here. And several, several books. I think this one, let's see. This one has, sometimes they tell you how many exactly. Then you have this little book, uh, box topper. And anytime they have little projects, they break it down for you and they tell you exactly how to finish it. So, so just organized and well thought out. Here's this one. Pretty, pretty little pattern. That would be pretty and you can change the color uh, and do anything with. But that one is stitched in Garden Gate, Gentle Arts Garden Gate. And it it's cute. You can make little gifts. They always have so many great little gifts. Look at this one. I just love that. Very quick stitches. You know, you can do these in an afternoon. I think even in this book, they show you how to finish this is a um, retractable measuring tape. So they have a, a um, directions on how to cover and finish the measuring tape cases. And that cute little mattress, I think it's called a mattress finishing. Cute little pattern for that. So, so many little bitty things. This is a pin cushion. They have the pattern on finishing this, on how to sew it and finish it. Um, 
very detailed in, uh, instructions. So just a great book, but this is Honeysuckle Manor. And then I got some books to add to my um, history of cross stitch and sample samplers and embroidery books. So this one I got from Cross Stitch and Crafts. It's called The Evolution of Samplers. This is an embroidery and sampler timeline. So it's just that it's all it is. It's how it's how it is typed up is just like a timeline. And what I thought was interesting, and I'll go over these a little bit more detailed when I get back into my um, Quaker sampler. But it even goes into the when the first needle was invented. I mean, this goes all the way back to, I just love this kind of stuff. It goes all the way back to um, hold on, early civilizations. 2000 BC is one of the first, first documents on this timeline. So I am so excited to share this, but this is called The Evolution of Samplers. It's an embroidery and sampler timeline. And Sandra is the one who pointed it out to me. She said, I know you would like this. And she was so right. I mean, it brings it up to even the first, when the, when the oldest documented, um, that, that has been discovered, oldest documented American sampler. So this is just so much fun. I just can't wait to go through this. So I've got a couple of other books that I found um, just throughout the week, actually, just at um, antique stores. This is called Samplers by Avril Colby. And this one, I didn't even have a book cover on it. It's called Samplers by Ann Seba, S-E-B-B-A. I haven't gone through them, but I just thought these were great books to add to my collection. And then the last one I found is called The Embroiderer's Story, Needlework from the Renaissance to Present Day. So, so many fun books to go through. So I'll tell y'all all about those as I learn a little bit more about them. And that is all my haul that I've had this week. So as you can see, I've been pretty good. So let's go over my whips that I've been working on. I have three whips. I finished the French Country Santa, but then I also have three whips that I've been going, that I've been working on this week. The first one is a Kathy Barrick design. This one is A-H to E-E, -E. and this one's been fun to stitch. I love a good monochromatic sampler, but this is A-H to E-E, -E. and I am stitching this um, on 36 count vintage country mocha, and I am using wavy navy. I'm using one strand of floss over two, and here's my progress. I've worked on this tree here. So I have not gotten very far, but that tree is taking me a while. And I love the wavy navy. I'm still finding little red specks of that uh, velveteen from Lady Dot Creates. I thought I got it all off of my table, but I keep finding it on stuff. So that is my progress. This has been so much fun to stitch. Now, uh, Kathy Barrick, on her design, she used very dark shutter green. It's an it's a MPI 646, but it's described as a very dark shutter green. And I'm using navy, wavy navy. So my other progress this week, I am really trying to finish this one this week. Today's Friday. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll have it finished by Sunday. But Barbara Anna Designs Dreaming Frida. This is a Christmas gift for my friend Kim. She knows she's getting it. I don't even think she watches my videos. You want to know how I know? Because she doesn't comment on some of the things that I say when I talk about her. So I'm calling you out, Kim, right now. I know you don't watch, but if you did, close your eyes. This is Dreaming Frida, and I'm making really good progress on it. I am working on her face right now, but I loved stitching those flowers. And I am using um, all the DMC colors. And I am using one strand of floss over two. This is 36 count vintage country mocha. And you can see on her hair or in her hair, it says Viva La Vida. 
and I still have to go in and add a flower here and do some back stitching, but I am getting closer and closer. So this is Dreaming Frida Barbara Anna design. No, I'm, I'm joking, I'm with Kim. She um, stitched me another Barbara Anna design. It's called Frida and Diego. And I'm excited to get that one. She's currently has it um, hanging in her store. And my last whip for this week, I am making really good progress on my um, Blackbird design and to all a good night. So this is it. And I am stitching this on 32 count vintage country mocha. And I'm using all of the called for a uh, gentle arts. So since I saw you all last, I finished the, the windows. I've filled in the brick and mortar and I've worked on the windows. So this is so much fun to stitch. This is one that I don't need any magnification. I just need good lights and I can stitch on it. So I find that I stitch, I grab this one when I'm in the car or when I'm going somewhere because I don't have to, I, I can stitch it very easily. So those are all of my whips that I've been working on this week. This coming week, I plan on finishing Dreaming Frida. Um, I'm going to work on some, kind of add some more of my others back into my rotation. I haven't worked on Plum Street Samplers um, Christmas one that I've been working on. I can't remember. Mm. I can't remember. Joyous Season? No. I can't remember the name of it. Mm. It'll come to me probably at 3 a.m. tonight. But I will work on that one a little bit this week. I haven't touched it in a while, so I'm looking forward to bringing that out. One thing I wanted to let you all know is next week I will probably record on Wednesday because we're going to Parents Weekend next weekend to see Gray. I'm really excited about that. And the other upcoming trip I have or a date that I want you all to be aware of is um, I'm going to Spring Green, Wisconsin again uh, in early December. And what I'm doing is I'm driving to Farmington, Missouri, and I'm going to be at Stitch Etc. Saturday, December the 3rd with Kim and Kay. We're going to be in her store in Kim's store, Stitch Etc. And I'll link all their information below. But I'm going to be there on Saturday, December 3rd, all day uh, from 10 till 4. And we are going to be working on finishing Christmas ornaments. So this will be open to anyone who can come by. Um, I will get more details and let you all know. But I believe Kim said, um, stitch any ornament you want. Keep it below five by five or five by five by five or smaller. And we will work on finishing those if you want to come by and finish Christmas ornaments with us. So um, look for more information from that. I will give you information as um, we work out those details, but Kim is going to supply the sticky board, some finishing trim and pieces like that. You just bring your stitched piece and we will work on finishing um, either on as a flat piece or mounted on a board or whatever you want to do, you, have, you will have options. So we will go over that in more detail um, probably over the next few weeks, but mark your calendar if you're in the area December 3rd, I will be at Stitch Etc. in Farmington, Missouri. And then the next day we go up to Spring Green, Wisconsin to go to Country Sampler. And I'm so excited. I love going to Country Sampler. So those are two trips coming up. Just wanted to make you all aware. So let's go into the giveaways from last week. So last week I had some giveaways that were from Fat Quarter Shop. And the question I asked you all was, let me know, who do you like to watch on FlossTube? Or let me know of any floss tubers that you have found or, or just your sort of regulars that you like to watch. So if you're looking for ideas of floss tubers or floss tubers you may not be aware of, read the comments from last week's videos. You'll have video, you'll have a lot of good choices there too. So the winners from last week, we had two choice, two options, excuse me, Two opportunities. So for Painted Meadow um, fabric uh, pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. The first one goes to Sandra with a C, Sandra Souder, S-O-W-D-E-R, Sandra with a C, C-A-N-D-R-A, Souder, S-O-W-D-E-R, 
And the second one goes to Heidi Sonnenberg, S-O-N-N-E-N-B-E-R-G. Then we had two opportunities to win from the typeface series, Frosty, also from the Fat Quarter Shop. This one goes to Mary Bergman, B-E-R-G-M-A-N. The second one goes to Marlene May, M-A-Y, Marlene May. These, this is such a cute series that they have started. They have several in that series now. Two opportunities to win Lori Holt stitch cards. The first, this is set in, in is in Nancy. Okay, the, this goes to Julie Blazek, B-L-A-Z-E-K, Julie Blazek. The other one goes to Robin, Robin, I'm gonna spell your last name, K-U-E-C-H-L-E, -E, Robin Kutchel, Robin. And then the next was two opportunities to win Autumn Love Pattern. This was designed by Lori Holt and the Matching Needle Minder. The first opportunity goes to Tina Thomas. Tina Thomas. The second one goes to Glenna, Glenna Hackney. Glenna Hackney. Then we had two quilt books, two opportunities to win this quilt book, Simply Half Yards. The first one goes to Beth Koenig, K-O-E-N-I-G. And the second one goes to Patricia Rather, R-A-E-T-H-E-R, Patricia Rather. And then the sixth giveaway from last week was a proper stitcher bag with a floss ring and my project cards. This goes to Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Leanne Briggs. So if all of you would please email me at thepropersticher at gmail.com, I will get those in the mail to you as soon as possible. And if um, I'm still waiting on a few people to message me from giveaways from last week. So, um, and, and those of you who won the Zoom call reach, uh, message, um, Zoom call stitch time together, um, I am in the process of getting all those names organized and I will be emailing you all again soon. But, so let's go over the giveaways for this week. All I need you to do is subscribe to my video, like the, calm down, Annie. Subscribe to my channel, like the video, and answer the question below. So this week I'd like to know, are you a coffee drinker or are you a tea drinker? Do you drink either of those? Just curious, just curious. So all of our giveaways today are also from the Fat Quarter Shop. They sent us a very large box a couple of weeks ago. So I am digging through that box and I am pulling things out to use as giveaways. So the first one is the Cross Stitch Journal. This is a great book to keep up with your stitching you have um, a place to write your project the name of the pattern the name of the designer the start date the end date and then all the information any notes that you would like to add this is what this journal is wonderful for it helps to keep you organized so the cross stitch journal and floss biddies so these are great for floss rings or floss tags to put your dnc or weeks or any of your floss on these tags so that's number one. Number two is, I'm dropping things. Number two is another packet. I'm having a hard time. Another packet of floss biddies. This one is a Halloween or fall design. You have, it's a limited edition floss biddies. There are 20 different floss drops in all of these, but this one has different ones. Or do they all? Yeah. This one's different. Each one's different. You have Halloween spooky themed. So those are the, the images on the back. So 
you get one of these and you get the Lori Holt Library Car Packs. These are great for writing down um, information that you used on your project and you can attach it to the back of your frame piece or if you like to keep track of everything that you've done on that project and keep them in a box. So this is number two. Number three is, number three is a pack of stickers from Stitching with the Housewives month to month. So I'll link it below. So if you wanna go and see what these look like, but these are stickers, a set of stickers and another set of floss bitties. These just have the needle and thread on them. So this is number three. Number four, I will draw two names for this, Ivy and Fern, I have two. So this is number four, Ivy and Fern um, quilt pattern, and it's, it's so Emma, designed by Crystal Stahl. So two opportunities to win that. The next is also from Fat Quarter Shop. This is a, it's called Kimberly Cuts Rotating Cutting Mat and it's a five and a half inch square. So it's a mini rotating cutting mat. So great to have next to your sewing machine, say, or anywhere small or travel cutting mat if you know you're just working on small pieces. And last but not least, number six, sleigh ride. It's so Emma cross stitch pattern. This is number six, such a cute, Design. This one uses all DMC or there is a classic color works list of colors as well. So those are the giveaways for this week. So like the video, subscribe to my channel, answer the question below, list the number that you'd like to be entered to win, and I will draw on Wednesday and come to you all next Wednesday um, with the winners for that. So until then, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you have some wonderful stitching time and I will see you all next week.